Children's stories. Is that, is that an easy option for a writer, writing children's stories? A simple it, it, option? It, oh. It's the hardest option of all. Uh, I, I can say that because I've done the other one as well, mm. a lot. There's absolutely no question to me that, that uh, uh, writing, we're talking about fine children's books as opposed to fine novels for adults. Uh, the children's book is far, far harder. It's not only harder, it's more important. I, if you want to know, I'll tell you why I think that in a minute. But it's harder. And, and I think I can almost prove it, because there is no writer of consequence in the world or who's ever lived who hasn't had a go at a children's book, from Tolstoy to Graham, Graham Greene's done four. He's a finest living novelist. He's done The Little Train, the little, uh, the, the little fire engine. That, uh, you're smiling, you see. Well, OK. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, they didn't succceed. Uh, Nabokov, uh, Saul Bellow, anyone you want to mention uh, has had a go at it. How are we going to get our children to read books again? Because I have some difficulty with my children making them. I love to read, and I read a yes. great deal, but I'm of the, the radio generation. How are we going to persuade the television generation of children it, it to It is back very, to very difficult indeed, because when I, I was young, there was not even any radio. Uh, when I was nine, I had a crystal set, and you put, put the little thing on it with the earphones. No, there was no problem then. I agree with you, it is difficult. Very, very difficult. So you don't draw from your own experience, but you've had a pretty, a pretty colourful life, apart from your books, haven't you? You were an RAF, in the RAF mm -hmm. during the war. Mm -hmm. You crashed. Mm -hmm. And didn't, didn't, didn't I read that you were a spy? <laughs> no, that's, a, that's an ugly word, a <laughs> spy. <laughs> no, I, I did. I, 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 I worked for um, British SIS, yes, the last half of the war when I was injured and couldn't fly. Sure I did. Yeah. I went to America and did it. I, um, I was very lucky because I, I, uh, my first little book I wrote was called The Gremlins, which was bought by Walt Disney. And Eleanor Roosevelt read it to her grandchildren and, and loved this book. And so I got invited to the White House. And uh, we got to know each other a bit, you know, and, and I would go for weekends. Uh, FDR uh, had a, his country place was called Hyde Park, a vast place, and I used to go there. Got to know him. Uh, this, I was only a young chap of 26 in an RAF uniform. And they had no business around there, really. But I was able, because of meeting at, at Hyde Park and in the White House, there was half the cabinet all the time. There was the Secretary of Treasury, Henry Morgenthau, and people like that. They were all there. And, and uh, my job was to try to help Winston Churchill to get on with FDR and, and tell Winston what was in the old boy's mind in America, you know. I was, I, was, I was really not spying against the Americans, I was trying to create amity. This wasn't where your flair for fiction grew up, was it? No, no, I, 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 couldn't, <laughs> muck, I couldn't muck about with that sort of thing. But it was, it was incredible for a young chap to, to know those sort of people, you know, in those days. He was a terrific jokester, FDR. I'll tell you something, the sort of things he used to do. That all of us would be sitting at lunch in Hyde Park with Princess Martha of Norway, who he adored. He had a sort of lech after her. And there were about 20 <laughs> people. And they'd all be eating some white fish. <laughs> and he'd point at me and he'd say, we got a Britisher here. I'll tell you a story about the British. He said, and he was a great naval historian. He said, in the War of Independence, there was a British captain of a man of war. And he made his fellow officers swear that if he was ever killed, uh, he would, his body would be shipped home for burial in England. And uh, so he was killed. And the officer said, well, the only way we can get this old fellow home is, is, is to put him in a barrel of rum and fill it and lash the barrel to the mast, you see. Right, good, good. And, and the ship docked eight weeks later in Plymouth and the relatives and the widow came on board. FDR's telling this at lunch, you know. Uh, came on board, and the great opening ceremony took place to the top off the barrel. Such a stench came out 
that strong men rushed to the rail and leaned over. You know, women fainted. The rats left the ship and swam. <laughs> what had happened, as Franklin Roosevelt explained to all these women with the white fish in front of them, was that all the way over, the sailors had drilled a hole in the bottom of the barrel and put a bung in it and had been drinking the rum. And when they were halfway over, they'd finished it all, you see. And, and as the widow went down the gangway, staggered down the gangway, one of the sailors was heard to remark, finest drop of rum I ever tasted in my life. <laughs> women pushed the fish away. FDR hooting with laughter, you see. Nice, nice sort of story, that. Oh, yes, lovely. Mm. <laughs> One of those kind of horror stories which, which mm. you have specialised mm. in. Tickler. Yeah. Do you, can you write children's stories and horror stories at the same time? Oh, no, no, I couldn't write it, tw two things together ever, ever, ever. Ever. It's so much work trying to think of one, you know, mm. plots. What, we're talking about children's stories, the horror stories. What, what's the, the art about frightening the life out of people, isn't it? Well, I don't try and frighten the life out of anybody. My, my, I don't write horror stories. I write funny stories. I, with, uh, no, I really do. With, with, with strange, quirky twists at the end. Yeah, yeah, but they're funny. It's my, what I think they're funny, anyway. <laughs> I mean, it, there's such a narrow line between, uh, between ma the macabre and, and the jokes, I mean, and laughter. It's a very... Na I mean, for example, if, if a woman who's deeply in love with a man and finds he's been doing nasty things with some other woman uh, crowns him with a blunt instrument and kills him, that's tragedy, right? It's tragedy. Now, if she happens to have a frozen leg of lamb in her hand and crowns him with that, then they begin to titter, you see. And then if she takes the frozen leg of lamb, puts it in the oven and cooks it and feeds it to the detectives who are looking for the murder weapon, that's comic. <laughs> <laughs> There's a very narrow line between the two.